River City Junction. River City, next station stop. Christ with the heat. Perhaps no good for an ocean salesman. Board, all aboard. What's so bad about credit? So fat. Charlie, you're an ain't no salesman. You're from your credit? No, sir. Or anybody else. River City. River City next. Cash for the merchandise. Cash for the button hooks. Cash for the soft goods. Cash for the fancy goods. Cash for the hogs and cask and demijohn. Cash for the crackers and the pickles and the fly paper. Look, what do you talk? 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 Where do you get it? What do you talk? You can talk. You can talk. You can bigger. You can talk. You can bigger, bigger, bigger. You can talk. You can talk. You can talk, talk, talk. Bigger, bigger, bigger. You can talk. I don't wanna, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't. But you gotta know the territory. Why some multi Ford made the trouble? Made the people wanna go, wanna get, wanna get, wanna get up and go. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, twenty-two, twenty-three miles to the county seat. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Who do you wanna patronize a little bitty two by four kind of store anymore? What do you talk? What do you talk? Where do you get it? At the bottle of tea at all. Take a gander at the store. At the mod dream store. At the present day store. At the present day mod dream departmentalized grocery store. What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? Where do you get it? What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? Where do you get it? You can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, you can bicker, you can talk, 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 bicker, 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 you can talk, I don't wanna, but it's different than it was. No, it ain't, but you gotta know the territory. Why? It's the you need a biscuit made the trouble. You need a you need to put the crackers in the package in the package. The you need a biscuit in the airtight sanitary package made the cracker bro. Obsolete, 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 obsolete. Cracker barrel went out the window with the mail pouch cut plug charm and stew. Changed the approach of a travel in salesman, made it pretty hard. No, it didn't, no, it didn't, but you gotta know the territory. Go on, go on. Go on with the hogs and cask and demi John. Go on with the sugar barrel, pickle barrel, milk pan. Go on with the tub and the pail and the tears. Ever met a fella by the name of uh, Hill? Hill? Hill. 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 Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never heard any salesman Hill. No, he doesn't know the territory. Doesn't know the territory. What's the fella's love? Never worry, he's got his line. Or that you need a biscuit in an airtight sanitary package of the Model T Ford. Just a minute, just a minute, just a minute. Never worries about his line, never worries about his line. For a doggone thing, he's just the bang beat, bell ringing, big hall, great go, neck and nothing, rip roar, and every time the bullseye sails, my professor Harold Hill, Harold Hill. Tell us, what's his line? What's his line? He's a big and he doesn't know the territory. Look, what do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? He's a music man. He's a what? He's a what? He's a music man, and he sells clarinets to the kids. With the big trombones and the rat tat drums and the big brass bass, big brass bass, and the pickle of the pickle of the uniforms too, with a shiny gold braid on the coat. And a big Girl, I don't know much about bands, but I do know you can't make a living selling big trombones. No, sir. Mandolin, pickle, 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 the piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When the man dances, certainly, boys. What else? The piper pays him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But he doesn't know that territory. Population 2212. Cigarette legal in this state. <laughs> Boy! All right. Now, if you're all through, I'll tell you about Harold Hill. You really know Harold Hill? Never seen him before in my life, but I know this much. He's giving every one of us a black eye. After he's worked a town over, they exhale him to a bike to him out of the tarred and feathered. But after the city limits on a rail. <laughs> oh, I think that's funny. Wait till it happens to you. Your hair never goes oh, back. Oh. Oh. Why should he get brought out of town on a rail? Because more to sell bandage units and uniforms and instruction books, he has to guarantee a teacher kids to play. Well, and to form the kids into a band with himself as a leader. Well, what's wrong with that? He doesn't know one of or another. That's what's wrong with that. He can't tell a bass drum from a pipe organ. I swear I'll catch up with that swimming two bit nimble rigor. When I do, I'll <laughs> be on his so <laughs> oh, 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 wow. You're mad, Charlie. Oh, I'd sure like to be around when you catch up with that fella. I won't be on this trip. Not in Iowa. Even the gay professor Harold Hill wouldn't try to sell them neck Hawkeyes out here. 
Gentlemen, you intrigue me. I think I'll give I will try. Don't believe I call your name. Don't believe I dropped it. Sunday, if you could accommodate me. And I expect I'm the man in charge of hiring rigs. Who is late as usual. Hey, Gregory! Marcellus! Why, Greg, you old son of a gun. But Greg, Professor Hill's the name. Harold Hill. But Greg, why didn't you tell me you wasn't coming? I didn't know I was myself. Besides, how could I know you'd end up in a little tank town like this? You were a pretty big slicker when you were in business with me. Ah, uh, too many close shaves the way you were. Besides, I got me a nice, comfortable gal, Ethel Toffelmeyer, the boss's niece. Gone legitimate, huh? I knew you'd come to no good. So, what's the pitch? You're not back in the band business. I heard you was in steam automobiles. I was. Well, what happened? Somebody actually invented one. <sighs> Now give me the load out here, Mars. Ah, uh, you'll never get anywhere with these stubborn islands. Besides, we got a stuff up music teacher who will expose you before you get your grip unpacked. Male or female? The music teacher? She's the librarian. Female. Perfect. That's what I wanted to hear. If she passes by, point her out to me. All right, how are you going to start the pitch? Same old way. Keep that music teacher off balance, and then my next step will be get your town out of the serious trouble it's in. Iowa City isn't in any trouble. Well, then I'll have to create some. I have to create a desperate need for a voice band, you remember. Now what's new around here? What can I use? Nothing. Except the billiard hall just got a new pool table. They never had a pool table before. No, only billiards. That'll do. See you later, Mars. And don't forget, music teacher. Excuse me, sir. Yep. Either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge, or you're not aware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, you got trouble, my friend. 
right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player, so I'm mighty proud to say I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Puppy caught with a horse sense, with a cool head and a keen eye. Did you ever take and try to give an ironclad lead to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a ball blind game. I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket. And I call that sloth the first big step on the road to the depths of degrade. I say first, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinch pack suit. And listening to some big out of town Jasper, hear them tell about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trot race, no, but a race where they sit down right on a horse. Like to see some stuck up jockey boy sick, no, I'm Dan Patch. Nick, but boy, oh, what I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. They got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in a table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. And all week long, your River City youth will be frittering away. I say, your young men will be frittering. Frittering away their noontime, supper time, short time, too. Get the ball in the pocket. Never mind getting Danny Lyons pulled to the screen door, patch with a beef stick pounded. Never mind popping any water to your parents who caught with the sister and empty out a Saturday night, and that's trouble. Yes, you got lots and lots of trouble. I'm thinking of the kids in the knickerbocker, shirt tail young ones, peeking in the pool hall when after school, you got trouble. Folks, right here in River City, trouble with a capital T, and that rhymes with P, and that stands for pool. Now I know all you folks are the right kind of parents. I'm gonna be perfectly frank. Would you like to know what kind of conversation goes on while they're loafing around that hall? They'll be trying out Bebo, trying out Cubebs, trying out Taylor Mates like cigarette fiends, and bragging all about how they're gonna cover up a telltale breath with sunset. One fine night, they leave the pool hall, heading for the dance at the armory, libertine men and scarlet women, and ragtime, shameless music that'll grab your son, your daughter with the arms of a jungle, animal instinct, masteria. Friends, the idle brain is the devil's playground trouble. Mothers of River City, heed that warning before it's too late. Watch for the telltale signs of corruption. The minute your son leaves the house, does he rebuttal his knickerbockers below the knee? Is there a nicotine stain on his index finger? A dime novel hidden in the corn crib? Is he starting to memorize jokes from Captain Billy's whiz bang? Are certain words creeping into his conversation? Words like swell. And so is your old man. Well, if so, my friends, they got trouble right here in River City with a capital T that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. We've surely got trouble right here in River City. Remember the main Plymouth Rock in the Golden Roll. Oh, we got trouble. We're in terrible, terrible trouble. That game with the 15 number balls is the devil's tool. Yes, 
sizes. Yes, ma'am. I don't remember the library being open last 4th of July. It was, Mama, all evening. Mama, Hamantha's suitcase has been following me around all over town. Oh, who? I never saw him before. Did he say anything? He tried. Did you say anything? Mama, of course not. Now don't dawdle, Amaryllis. So do la re -ti -mi a little slower and please keep the fingers curved as nice and high as you possibly can. Don't get faster, dear. If you don't mind me saying so, it wouldn't have hurt you to find out what the gentleman wanted. I know what the gentleman wanted. What, dear? You'll find it in Balzac. <laughs> Excuse me for living, but I've never read it. Neither is anyone else in this town. There you go again with that same old comment about the lamentality of River City people and taking it all too much to heart. Now, Mama, as long as the Madison Public Library was entrusted to me for the purpose of improving River City's cultural level, I can't on my concern that the ladies of River City keep ignoring all my counsel and advice. But, darling, when a woman's got a husband and you've got
my wife, to Laylee McKechnie Shin for leading the singing, and to J.C. Squires for his fine stereotypic and slides, and to Ethel Toffemeyer, our fine player piano. Player piano. As mayor of River City, I welcome you, River Citizens, to the 4th of July exercises set up indoors to count the weather. Four score! Four score in seven years. Ah, the members of the school board will now be presenting a patriotic tablet. <coughs> The members of the school board will not be presenting patriotic tableau, some disagreement about costumes, I suppose. Instead, the Wataw Negroes of the local wigwam, the Piwatha, will present a spectacle, my wife. <laughs> In which my wife, Eulalie McKechnie Shin, will take a leading part. Each 
bassoon having his big fat say there were 50 mounted cannon in the battery thundering thundering louder than before clarinets of every size and trumpeters who'd improvise a full octave higher than the score without moving a muscle. Never mind. I want his credentials. Grab that! Huckle me almost blew up as a shit! Thank you, Professor. Have to make an example of him. Ringleader, you know. What he does, the gang does. Chewie, Clyde, let me go! You wild kid, you hanging around my oldest girl. His father's one of them day laborers, salvage town, you wild kid, you. Tagging down Main Street last Sunday after my oldest girl. I wasn't either tagging. Don't you contradict me! We was just walking together, Geely Clyde! I know what he's doing, my little Gracie Senior. Now you stay away from my oldest girl or hear from me till who laid the rails. Hill, I'll talk to you Monday morning at City Hall about this band thing. It's 10 o'clock sharp. Men, I want that spellbinder's credentials! Well, Constable, I'll be responsible for the boy. You don't know this kid. He's tough and he's got his gang waiting outside. Oh, I'll be careful. Tommy likes to talk about the band. Oh, gee, Professor, that's for the little kids. I'm not talking about you playing in the band. You're mechanically minded, aren't you? Ever do anything with perpetual motion? Jimmy's Nearly Jimmy's had it a couple of times. You did! You're my man. Do you realize nobody has ever invented a music holder for a marching piccolo player? No place to hang the music? 
Geely, Clyde, wonder where I can get some wire from. Look in your cellar. That's where people keep wire. Oh, Tommy. Now, Constable, I'll show you how to break up a gang. Oh, young lady. Oh, miss. What's your name? Sunita. I didn't have any idea you was beckoning to me. Ye gods. Do you know Tommy Gilas? Well, I... Tommy, this is Anita. Escort the young lady home. Only accepting. I'm not going home. I have to go to the library. Ye gods. And escort the young lady home by way of the library. By way of the candy kitchen. Yes, sir. Do I have to? I have to. Yes, sir. <laughs> Ye gods. <laughs> Professor, you're a pretty bright young fellow. You made a couple mistakes, though. Oh? The mayor happens to own that billiard parlor and that new pool table. Oh, what was my other mistake? That's Anita. She's the mayor's oldest girl. Just a minute, Professor. We need your credentials. We're the school board. <clears throat> Academic certificate. Nothing of the kind. We need letters and papers. Make a put of a bond. What am I hearing? Say, ice cream. Ice cream. But I don't think I'm gonna. That's what you're trying. All right, to. talk then. Down here. Ice cream. <laughs> talk slow. Ice cream. See, singing is only sustained talking. Now you. Now you. Ice cream. Now you, sir. Ice cream. Ice cream. <laughs> Ladies, from now on, you'll never see one of those men without the other three. Oh, professor, you're wrong. Why? They've hated each other for 15 years. Ice cream. Just like when he used to imitate that old conductor fellow back in Joplin. Yeah. Oh, kid stuff. I'm in rare form these days, son. Just you keep your eyes on me for the next four weeks. Four weeks? It used to only take ten days for the instruments to arrive. It still does, but it takes four weeks for the uniforms. Uniforms? You haven't added uniforms. Uniforms and instruction books. Instruction books? But you can't pass yourself off as a music professor. Not for any four weeks. Mars. But you don't know one note from another. I have a revolutionary new method called the Think System, where you don't bother with notes. Ah, uh, but in four weeks, the people will want to hear the music, and you'll have to lead a band. But when the uniforms arrive, they forget everything else. At least long enough for me to collect and leave. Oh, oh this is a refined operation, son. And I've got a time right down to the last wave of the workman's hand on the last train out of town. Now, Mr. Washburn, if you'll excuse me. 
gonna line yourself up a little canoodling, huh? Well, I could fix you up with Ethel's sister, real nice girl, teaches Sunday school. No, why I need your wholesome, innocent Sunday school teacher for me. That kind of girl spins webs no spider ever. Now listen, boy. A girl who trades on all that purity merely wants to trade my independence for her security. The only affirmative she will file refers to marching down the aisle. No good and glorious gleaming pristine goddess. No, sir, for no Diana do I play fun. I can tell you that right now. I snarl, I hiss. How can ignorance be compared to bliss? I spark, I fizz. For the lady who knows what time it is, I cheer and I rave. For the virtue I'm too late to save. The sadder but wiser girl for me. Baby doll, baby. No, sir, that kind of child ties knots. No sailor ever knew. I prefer to take a chance on a more adult romance. No, do we young miss who keeps resisting all the time she keeps insisting? No wide eyed, wholesome, innocent female. No, sir, why she's the fisherman, I'm the fish, you see. I flinch, I shy when the last with the delegate is. Sin walks in, I hope, and I pray for Hester to win just one more A. The sad of a wiser girl's a girl for me. The sad of a wiser girl for me. Naturally, I'm reticent. Oh, yes. I'm reticent. Of course, Mrs. Shin. But you see, part of my music plans include a committee on the dancing. No, wait. No, wait. Do that again, Mrs. Shin. Your foot, the way you raised it just now. Oh, well, I have a bunion there. Oh, with grace! <laughs> a natural flow of rhythm, of expression of line and movement. Mr. Hill. You must accept the chairmanship of the ladies' auxiliary for the classic dance. Mustn't she, ladies? Please! Yes, of course! Every move you make, Mrs. Shin, bespeaks Del Sart. Will you? Will you? Say yes, Mrs. Shin. You lay a mechanically shin. That is, I hope uh, dancing. Well, then you accept. Yes, and I would like to say. Thank you. Now, the young lady who plays the piano, <laughs> Mary in Peru, I believe. After all, she is the librarian. Pick a little sort of little, pick a little sort of little, cheap, 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 sort of little, pick a little.
all right. I know everything and it doesn't make any difference. What are you talking about? You were probably very young. Anyone can make a mistake. What? No apologies. No explanations, please. I'll only be in town a short while and the sadder of a wiser girl for me. Will you please make your selection and leave? I have. Well, what do you want to take out? The librarian. Shh. The librarian. You're not listening, Marion. Look. Marion. Marbles. Six stillies, eight Aggies, a dozen Peewees, and one big glassy with an American flag in the middle. I think I'll draw them. No! Shh. Madam Librarian. What can I do? My dear, to catch your ear, I love you madly, madly, madam librarian, Marion, heaven help us, if the library caught on fire, and the volunteer host brigade had to whisper the news to Marion, madam librarian. I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian, Marion. If I stumbled and I busted my what you would call it, I could lie on your floor unnoticed, but my body had turned to care. Regan. Madam Librarian. Now in the moonlight.
but when I try it here to tell you, dear, I love you madly, madly, mad on my very hint. Mary hint, it's a long lost cause I can never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. And they talking out loud with any library hint, such as men. Madam Librarian Marvel. Well, Tommy, we've had a pretty good morning. 11 sales and 12 tries. I'll tell you what, it's almost noon. You better go home and get some dinner. I'll try to go by myself. Goodbye, Professor. Thanks, Tommy. <laughs> Why no, Mayor Shin? I collect doorbells. This particular specimen has an unusual tone quality that- Flattery would not avail you. So seeing a statue door in this county, Malfeasance without a permit. Now, why haven't you been out to City Hall with your references? Just missed you, I. Mr. Mayor, your hand. Oh, no. What? What? That spread of the little finger. It's hereditary. Oh, it is? What does that mean? It means that your son's little finger is perfectly situated to operate the spit valve on an E-flat flugelhorn. Is that good? Good. It means that America has at last produced an artist who can flew with a minute waltz in 50 seconds. How can I get one of these horns? Sign here, Mr. Mayor. That'll be $17 in for fee. Yes, sir. Just think I could have missed this whole. I haven't got any son. You unscrupulous flew by now. You'll be down to see you with your bygone papers by 3 o'clock. You mean this afternoon? I couldn't make myself any plan if I see a Quaker on his day off. <laughs> Mrs. Peru, do you realize you have the facial characteristics of a cornet virtuoso? I don't know if I understand you entirely, Professor. If your boy has that same firm chin and those splendid cheek muscles, by George! <laughs> not that he could ever be really great, you understand, but... Is that so? And in the name of St. Bridget, why not? Well, you see, all the really great cornet players were Irish. Clark, or Mendes, <laughs> or Fly. But, Professor, we are Irish! No. No, really. What clinch is it? Sign here, Mrs. Prue. Your boy was born to play the cornet. Fine, fine. That'll be $7 earnest money. Nothing more due until the first installment payable at the opening of band practice. Ah, thank you. And of course, I'll need the boy's measurements for his band uniform. His uniform! Hello, son. Certainly his uniform. And there won't be a penny due until delivery, which gives him four weeks to enjoy, to anticipate, to imagine, at no cost whatsoever. Never allow the demands of tomorrow to interfere with the pleasures and excitements of today. Would it have a... Uh, a uh, stripe? Certainly, my boy, a white gold stripe down each side. What do you think of that? You'll have to excuse Winthrop, Professor. We can't get him to say three words a day, even to us. If you can get him to play in that band, you'll see St. Michael's one way with you. But if anyone can do it, I'll bet you can. Out of a crowd, I'd pick you for a hard carrying, clay pipe smoking, shamrock wearing, harp playing, mammerty pinching, Irishman, be gone with me, Jabbers. Where are you from, me by? Gary, Indiana. I knew it's Gary. Where did you say? Gary, Indiana. In fact, Gary Conservatory was my alma mater. Was she now? Why, yes. Gold medal class about five. How to do, Miss Peru? How to do, Mr. Hill? Of course, Peru. I thought the name sounded familiar. I've tried to see you since the other night, but he wants to put Winthrop in the bed. We're not interested, Mama. But Marion, the boy might have his father's musical gift. He does have my jaw, you know. Oh, your husband musical. Would well, I like to have a talk with him? I'm sure we on everyone's homes like this, prying into personal affairs. We're not interested. Marion. That's one for and one against. Now, might not let the boy's father decide. The boy's father is dead. Anything else? Oh, I'm sorry. But that's all the more reason why your brother should have something like this. My brother is a ten-year-old problem child who can't understand why his father was taken away. Would you care to explain it to him? He's been brooding about it for two years. 
And as to your musical tricks, why don't you go into business with some nice carnival man who sells gold painted watches and glass diamond rings? Musical tricks, Miss Peru, I hardly. I get the feeling she likes the idea. Oh, a little cautious, perhaps, but I admire that woman. Just keep me alive, and I'll be back later in the week. Well, one moment, Professor, about the boy's measurements. I make all his clothes. Sleeve, 21. Waist, 18. Crouch, 14. Fine. That's all I need. Now I must get back to the hotel. Professor, I do hope you'll excuse Marion. She's not really... Please, don't worry about a thing. I'm sure that it'll work. She's just as lovely as yourself. Good day to you, Peru. Has he gone? He has, and I hope not forever. Darling, don't you ever think about your future. Gary, Indiana Conservation Class of Watch 5. Now, darling. Now, Mama, surely a girl's future doesn't depend on encouraging every fast-talking, self-centered, woman-chasing, traveling man who comes to town. And the fact that he claims his commodity is music does not, in this particular case, impress me. All right, darling, all right. Only it's a well-known principle that if you keep the steel in one drawer and the flint in another, you'll never strike up much of a fire. Mama! Winthrop! Winthrop, I know you're there. Please go to the library and ask Miss Grubb for the book I set aside. It's the Indiana State Journal, 1890 to 1910. It's a large brown volume with black corners. Do I have to? You won't have to say anything. I've written it all down. Thank you, dear. What are you up to? Why do you need books at this hour of the night? I have a feeling the Indiana Journal may help me poke some large holes into the professor's claims. Well, I give up. At your age, if you don't mind me asking, what kind of white knight do you expect to come riding along? Well, I'm not waiting for Luther Grainer to back me into the ancient history shelf every time he comes into the library. <laughs> he does. Or Ed Gimmage in that buggy of his removable back seat. But I'm not waiting for a man in shining white armor either.
Nita. Tommy, Papa and Mama are sitting right there in the bank. Ye gods! All right, then meet me after supper. I can't. It's a fourth league night. Meet you where? The footbridge. You see, isn't that what I just said? Last time the lumber yard, and now the footbridge. And where will you meet me after that? In the black hole of Calcutta? Ye gods! I only want to show you my invention. What invention? A music holder for a marching piccolo player. It still has a couple of minor flaws. See, when you keep it tight enough to hold the music steady, you cut off your circulation, and you can't wiggle your fingers. <laughs> Meanwhile, you could go blind. It's mommy, it's Papa. Is that the first thing I said or not? Yes, George. Yes, the very first thing I said, or I'll hit with a horse. Get that spellbinder's credential I said, morning of July 4th, 1912. And now, my wife is dancing in any and all hours of the night instead of in the home. But George! The school board's singing up street and down island instead of 10 to 7 in the city matters. My oldest girl's booting around with some wild kid, and my business has fallen off so far, I can't find my balance sheet. There should. I found something very interesting in this book about Professor Hill's alma mater. His who? His university. I know all about that. In fact, that's the only thing I can ever get out of him. Gary Conservatory, class of Ox 5. If you'll just take time to read a little bit about the conservatory, I don't think you'll have to look any further. It's on page. The Wells Fargo wagon's just coming up from the depot. The Wells Fargo wagon? A likely story, yeah. Does that sound right? The Wells Fargo wagon? It could be the band instruments. The band instruments? Uh -huh. Grecian urns. Two. Two Grecian urns. Two. 
a fountain. Go oh, splendid, ladies. I predict that our dull syrup is going to be the highlight of the ice cream sociable. Now, gentlemen, if you're ready. Oh, and ladies, remember, don't make me tell you again. Always keep your face to the audience. All right, Mr. Dunlop. It's you in the sunrise. It's you in my car. It's you. the new moves the professor taught us. All right, what'll it be? The Shapoopy. Oh, wow. <laughs>
Doctor! Papa! Mr. Shin, Your Honor, your daughter and I are going steady behind your back. Why, you? Well, we'd rather be doing it in front of your back, but... Do what? I never get an entire mind to the Zanita scared you, but I'm not. I should think you'd hate to have your own daughter scared you, Geely Clyde. I'll warn you once more. If I ever see you touching my daughter, I'll buy God horse whip you till hell won't have it again. No, George! Not one poop out of you, madam. <laughs> I think he means... Pete? Yes. Then now get out of this public building. I got as much right in a public building as anybody. Right? How do you get any right aiding and abetting when swindling activities with spell-binding symbol salesmen? You know what I see written all over you? <coughs> Reform school. Now get out. Get out, you wild kid. Papa, please. It's capulets like you who make blood in the marketplace. Ye gods. You watch your phraseology, young woman. Now go home. <laughs> you lately. <laughs> Yes, George, I- Tend to your dance. Your dance? I'll hand us in and take it up with the wild kids from the wrong side of town. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, if I could just make you understand. Well, you can't. And thanks for nothing. I read that book you gave me from cover to cover from now for a whole week and didn't find a single thing. Mr. Mayor, if you please. I'll settle your hash as soon as I get these premises off my oldest girl. Yes. Yes. All right, but in the meantime, I want you to know I'm vouching for Tommy Gillis. That boy's got the confidence of every kid in town. You'll be standing in the line waiting to shake his hand by the time our band plays its first concert. By the time your band plays its first concert, the individual members will have the four gather in wheelchairs, the kind of their broken legs I have from tripping over their own beards. I'll tell you something, my fine young, feathered young, oh, never mind, Oliver, J.C. Ewart's Olive. I want this man's reference and I don't want him tonight. Don't let him out of your sight. He's slipperier than a Mississippi sturgeon. You mean you want us to get his credentials? Get his papers or get him in jail. I couldn't make myself any clearer if I see a button hook in well water. Professor Hill, I think Marishan has behaved abominably, and I think it was wonderful you <coughs> coming to Tommy's defense. Oh, that was nothing. Yes, it was. Oh, no. A man can't dodge the issue every time a little personal risk is involved. What does the poet say? The coward dies a thousand deaths, the brave man only five hundred. <laughs> and fortunately, of course, the mayor is already pretty mad and kind of his billiard parlor now. Oh, I suppose a recommendation from a musical authority like yourself would help, but I couldn't think of asking you to do a thing like that. Why, Professor Hill! You would? I'd be glad to. I just wish I was a little more informed. I've been wanting to talk to you about Winthrop's cornet. His cornet? Another pearl keys. I'm sure it's fine. But you see, he never touches it. Oh, the first week or so he made a few, uh, experimental lats, I guess you'd say? Yes, yes. Lats. And he sings the manuet and gee da da almost constantly. la dee da dee da dee da dee da But he never touches the cornet. Oh, you see? He says you told him it wasn't necessary. Well. He tells me about some ink system. If he thinks the minuet and gee, he won't have to bother with the notes. Why, Professor? Miss Marion, the think system is a revolutionary method out of it. So is Galileo's conception of the heavens, Columbus's conception of the egg, the globe. Box conception of a well tempered clavichord. Hmm. Now, I cannot discuss these things here in public, but if you'd allow me to call, when may I call? Why, any night this week? Pick a little, pick a little, talk a little, chee chee chee, talk a little, pick a little. on the subject somehow. Now I have just which one up in my hotel room. Take me a second. Sorry, I'll have to go with 
here. Yes. Well, let's see if I have my key. Oh, what's this? A testimonial from Madame Rene, the only female bassoon player ever to appear on the Red Path circuit. Her stage name, of course. Actually, she was from Moline. Lighter Rose Quackenbush. Could I see that for a minute? Oh, you'll never forget the name. Lighter Rose. Same as the old song. <laughs> Lighter Rose, I'm home again, Rose. To get the sun back in the sky. Lighter Rose, I'm home again, Rose. About a thousand kisses shy. Ding dong ding. I can hear the chapel bell chime. Ding dong. If you 
like to have a logical explanation How I happened on this elegant syncopation I will say without a moment of hesitation There is just one place that can light my face Gary, Indiana Gary, Indiana Not Louisiana, Paris, France, New York, or Rome But La di da di da di da di da. I'll do the mama. Don't you have to change for the sociable? There's time later. The shins live around here somewhere. The shin home is on the East Elm. This is West Elm. God, why? I see they have the piano teacher in town. You must know about this fellow Hill from a boys band. Yes. Ah, but I wonder where you know more. I got the goods on him in Spain. That swinging two-bit thimble rigger. So I got to see Shin. Well, I'm just passing through, and I'm great when it's a 15 minute water stop, but uh, I should wish it were 20. Wouldn't mind spending five minutes concentrating on you, girly. Who are you? The name's Charlie Cow, and El Cielo. But just now, I'm not to protect the good name of the traveling fraternity from that swindler. Mr. Cow, you're making a big mistake! Mistake, my old lady's corset cover. That, that, that man's been the raspberry seat of my wisdom tooth just long enough. He spoiled it a little for me, and he's not going to spoil either. Say, what kind of music teacher are you? You couldn't see right through him? He's no more professor than I know all about that. Band leaders are always called professor. It's a harmless deception. He's a fine director in his scholastic. Wait, wait, wait. Fine director. Have you heard one note of music from any band? No, but. But nothing, girly girl. He's never formed a band in his life, and he never will. He'll just listen to me for a minute. I'd like to. I like to do more than that kind of time. So I sure got the inclination. But now I got to get back on that train and leave this dime and put someone on the way to the depot. A bad girl, girl. See you next time, too. You'll never make that train to the depot. You'll have to catch it at the crossing. No, sir. I got to leave word and I can see you aren't going to leave it. Wait a minute. Mr. Cowell, you don't know me. Yet. Is that an invitation? No, it's just I don't know you and... Yes, I need more time anyways. I mean, as well as I'd like to. No trouble there, girl. Really. I never met a man who sells anvils. That's something, well, quite different. It takes a real salesman, I can tell you that. Anvils have limited appeal, you know. What am I doing? I missed that train, I'll be fired. Unless I gotta leave word about Hill. Leave word for me? Not on your tin I don't know you deliver these letters. Try me! Illinois, he's taken away from every one of them. That's 102 counties. Not to mention little candy futures like you make is up to just to keep their mouths shut. Either one of you should have asked me, girl and girl. Shall we set, as your mother said? Well, I... You did ask me to call. Did I? I didn't mean anything. Now, Miss Marion, I'm not suggesting your invitation inferred anything but academic enlightenment. The think system. I went by your house to try to explain it to your time or two this week, but there always seemed to be people around, mostly ladies, I thought. Yes, Mrs. Squires and several of the ladies. I'm glad. I wouldn't want anybody beating my time. <laughs> you wouldn't? No, ma'am. Well, it's seven. It's not the convenient night. See you at the sociable later. Professor Hill, is it true that you've had a hundred... What I'm trying to say is... Yes? Is it true that you've developed a... a think system? What? A think system? A, oh, think system, yes. It's really very simple. As simple as whistling 
Nobody has to show you how to use your lips and whistling. You only have to think a tune and have it come out clearly here. Now just try this yourself before you ask any questions. I take your word. Can we sit down? Are all music teachers as dense as I am? All music teachers? I dare say you meet dozens, even a hundred. Well, I... Are they all as fascinated as I am with the think system? Some more, some less. One young lady had thought of the same system before I got to her town. She showed me a few refinements. I see. Have I said something wrong? Please don't let me keep you, Professor Hill. You must have many more important things to do than to explain the think system to me. Can't think of one. And I must be very dull company for a man of your experience. Oh, say, where'd you get an idea like that? One hears rumors of traveling salesmen. Now, Miss Marion, you mustn't believe everything you hear. After all, one even hears rumors about librarians. I suppose you're referring to Uncle Maddie. Uncle Maddie? Mr. Madison, my father's best friend. No matter what they say, he left me in a shirt job so Mother Winthrop and I could have some security. Surely you don't believe? Of course not. That's exactly what I'm saying. Why do you think people start those rumors? Narrow-mindedness, jealousy, jealousy mostly, I guess. Exactly. And jealousy mostly starts rumors about traveling salesmen. What have you heard? Uh, oh, nothing about you personally, just generally. What have you heard generally? Just that. But of course it stands to reason that that disappointment and jealousy can lead to, I mean, take you for instance, your intentions to customers. Well, teachers might be easily misinterpreted, might they? I mean, no, honestly, might they? Why? So you say if the salesman or somebody were jealous, I mean, they could be downright lies, couldn't they? What could? Rumors and things. Of course. It just proves you shouldn't believe everything you hear, doesn't it? I mean, if you discuss things. Miss Marion, I would be delighted to discuss anything in the world with you. But couldn't we do it sitting down? You do sit. Your knees bend and all. We could sit on the porch steps. We could also sit on a large hollow log over the footbridge. I couldn't think of it. I've never been to the footbridge with a man in my life. Just to talk. I've got to dress for the sociable. Then meet me there in 15 minutes. I just can't. Please? Some other time? Maybe tomorrow? My dear little librarian, pile up enough tomorrows and you'll find you've collected nothing but a lot of empty yesterdays. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd like to make today worth remembering. So would I. The foot reach 15 minutes. 15 minutes. on you from the parlor. <laughs> <laughs>
Marion, there's a lot of things you don't know about me. Hey, Greg! Excuse me, I'm expecting a cable from Hector Berlioz. This could be it. Now what? Look, who's the salesman here? It looks like she's selling and you're buying. You nuts? I didn't know I was going to be able to leave tonight. I had to keep her off balance, didn't I? She's so far off balance, you can't tell her from a cat boat in a hurricane. Listen, Buster Brown, I've come up with ranks on this skirmish. I'm not resigning without my condition. But, Greg, you can't get anything out here on the footbridge. There's a place over Madison Park near the search bowl. Makes this footbridge look like the old lady's home. Now, beat it. Go get the rig. Never a peaceful moment in the music business. Now then, where were we? You were about to tell me what I don't know about you. Yeah, well, we really don't have to get into that just now, do we? No, we don't. Forever, for that matter, Harold. The librarian hasn't felt like doing much research lately, but she did plenty when you came. Oh, about what? About Professor Harold Hill, Gary Conservatory of Music, Golden Medal Class, about five. Harold, there wasn't any Gary Conservatory in Ot five. But there certainly Because the town wasn't even built till Ot six. I'll see you at the sociable. You knew all the time. Since July 7th, three days after you came, I tore this page out of the Indiana Journal. It was originally intended to use against you, but now I give it to you with all my heart. But if you knew, why didn't you? Why, you little. <laughs> While 110 cornets played the air, that I modestly took my place as the one and only base, and I own but up and down the square. Good night, my son, my good night, my love. With 110 cornets right behind.
chance. You wouldn't tell the truth anyway. Why would you? Would not. Would you? Tell me anything you want to know. Can you lead a band? No. Are you a big fat liar? Yes. Are you a dirty, rotten crook? Yes. Let go of me, you big liar. What's the matter? You wanted the truth, didn't you? Now I'm bigger and you're gonna stand here and get it all, so you might as well quit wiggling. There's two things you're entitled to know. One, you're a wonderful kid. I thought so from the first. That's why I wanted you in the band, just so you'd quit moping around and feeling sorry for yourself. What band? I always think there's a band kid. What's the other thing I'm entitled to know? Well... Actually, the other thing really isn't out of any of your business now that I think of it. I wish you'd never come to River City. No, you don't, Winthrop. Fifthory, you believe him. I believe everything he's ever said. But he promised us. I know what he promised us, and it all happened just like he said. The lights, and the flags, and the colors, and the symbols. But where was all that? The way every kid in this town walked around here all summer and looked and acted, especially you. I can't go with her. Why not? For the first time in my life, I got my foot caught in the door. Point. Rest assured, this snake in our bosom would be mis misapprehended by this time. Yes, yes. And always remember, my fellow river citizens, I can only remind you that I did everything in my power of preventing this dire from ha happening. Happening. Someone get the cornet. Four score! collecting feathers and melting tar, I will not say them nay. Well, I should think there ought to be some of you who can forget our everlasting Iowa stubborn chip on the shoulder arrogance long enough to remember River City before Harold Hill arrived. Do you remember? Well, do you? Surely some of you ought to be grateful for what he has brought to River City, and if so, I should think you'd want to admit it. <laughs> You're wasting a great deal of time here. If there's a person in this hall who doesn't think Hill should be tar or feathered, let them stand up. Have you all forgotten about expensive band uniforms, technical instruction books, and high-priced band instruments? Have you forgotten the clear understanding and warranty that your children will be taught to play in a band? Well, where is the band? Where is the band? Think, men. Think. <laughs> <laughs> 